Hi, this is Tim and welcome to Talks with Tim. Getting ready to make some videos and I was going over the list and our list is kind of categorized. We have some videos that are sure things we are going to make them. We have some that are, if we happen to have the equipment and the time, we'll make them. And then we have another category that is often asked for, but not going to happen videos. And today I wanted to talk about one of those. First things first, if you came here thinking you'll learn how to get by an Allen Bradley password, just go ahead and click on the next one because we're not going to talk about that today. What we are going to discuss today is why do people put passwords on PLCs and do they do any good? Also, before we start, I think I probably need to put some ground rules on the comments of these because there are certain things that absolutely can't be talked about. Whether you agree with passwords or disagree with passwords, Rockwell Automation has made a clear stance that they don't like us talking about passwords. In fact, there I can talk about almost anything Rockwell related, good or bad, and they're not going to say anything. Actually, I have had a rash of distributors lately talking about one of my videos that I should take it down because it doesn't line up with Rockwell's brand. And I told them, hey, I don't work for Rockwell and Rockwell's not going to do anything about this. But what they will do something about is talking about how to get rid of their passwords. So I'm cool with some discussion in the comments about passwords, whether we should have them, whether we should not. But what you can't talk about is any type of crack of passwords or anything like that. So if Rockwell has a tech note about getting by a password and it's public, then you can post that tech note number and a short description of what they're doing. Now, if Rockwell has a tech note and it's private or you have to have a tech connect contract, then you can post that tech note number and the title or what you're going to learn in it. But again, you can't post exactly what's in the tech note. But every time I get this question about, hey, will you show me how to password protect a PLC? Or will you show me how to do source protection in Studio 5000? My next question always is, why do you want to password protect your PLC? And the answer almost always exclusively is, well, I don't want the customer to be able to copy my machine. And I get that to a point, but I always ask them, well, did the customer pay you for the time to write the program? And they're always like, well, yeah, they did pay for it, but I had way more time in it than I should have. Well, okay, that's a quoting issue. That's not really any type of proprietary rights issue. And, you know, and it's kind of a cool deal, you know, at least as of now, intellectual property such as PLC programmers is held by the PLC program. So you do have the right to password to protect your PLCs. But the question is, should you? And I have opened up a lot of password protected PLCs. Now, let, let, me, let me make sure this is clear. First of all, you usually don't need a crack to open up a password protected PLC. When the machine is down, you can call the vendor and be like, hey, your machine is broke. And I'm pretty sure this is what's wrong with it. Now, do you want to fly here or do you want to give me the password so that I can fix it? And typically they're going to give you the password. And I have never opened up a PLC program and saw revolutionary code. In fact, I would almost say 90% of the time I open it up and there is crap code. There is spaghetti code. They're password protecting these things, I think, because they don't want people to know how horrific their programs look. Now, there are a few exceptions I've seen as far as password protecting PLCs where it was good. Now, one that I don't believe is there is security. I think if you think that you're putting a password on a PLC and that's securing your PLC from attacks, you desperately need to learn more about security. But I did see a few cases where it's like, okay, I get this. One was a system that had to be precisely timed. And if you messed with that timing, then you could really have a wreck on your hands. Now, we could argue back and forth about safety and redundancy and all that, but this had a very full-blown control logic system that ran most of it. And then it had a MicroLogix 1100, which even when I looked at the machine, it was like, that's kind of weird. But it had, I think, four inputs and two outputs. 
and there was a manual just for that PLC that one had a printed copy of the program. It explained why that PLC was password protected. It explained the dangers of going by that password protection and changing something. And also, it went in detail about how to troubleshoot those four inputs and two outputs. And I think that was an example of, okay, these guys really do not want anybody messing with this, but they're cool if everybody messing with the rest of the machine. So they put that one PLC in, it was password protected, but it wasn't like it was hiding their code. The other one I saw was at a chemical plant and they had password protected every PLC in the entire plant. Now they, let me take that back. They made every PLC so that you could view the code, but you couldn't change the code. And if you wanted to change the code, if you needed to change the code, because code didn't need change there, you had to submit a form that said, hey, here's what I want to change. Here's why I need to change it. And then someone else had to review it and make sure that those changes would work the way you wanted. And maybe they had some back and forth about what should be done. They approved it. And then they really had a password keeper and he handed the programmer the password. They went out there and made the change to the equipment. And then another programmer went and checked that everything was changed just like it should be and put a new password in and submitted it back to the password keeper. So their goal wasn't to hide anything. Their goal was to make sure unsafe changes didn't happen to their machines. So this is the two times I saw where it's like, okay, those, those look, seem like good points to have passwords. But that's two out of numerous, and I mean numerous, bad applications for passwords. And I think Rockwell could actually do something about this. And that actually, it's just a pick on Rockwell time. I think all PLC manufacturers could do something about this. Because we do. We, we, you know, first, you do have manufacturers putting passwords on their equipment. We also have the disgruntled employee that on their way out the door goes and password protects machines. So there are a lot of passwords that end up on machines and the customer doesn't even know. And I think that's where the beginning of our issue is. Now I tell customers all the time is when you get a piece of equipment in, you need to get the program and you need to make sure that you can open up the program and there are no passwords. Oh, well, we don't have the software. Well, pay another vendor a couple hundred dollars to come in and just look. I mean, do something. Don't be like, well, we don't have the software. We're at the mercy of the manufacturer. No, you're not. You have options. And you need to make sure that you're getting what you paid for. So if you paid for a machine and it's PLC controlled and it needs a PLC program, you need to make sure you got that program. Now, there are some situations where maybe there's a lease system going on or maybe there's a payment system going on. And I've seen those and I don't know how I feel about them, but I think overall Rockwell, and actually it's not just Rockwell, I think all PLC manufacturers could do a better job with password protection. I mean, if we're gonna get serious about it, if we're gonna say that you know all the cybersecurity and password protection is important, then we can do something about it. Is first, the customer needs to be involved in knowing that that password's there. I lease Studio 5000 now, and so it's pretty easy to download the software, but I've got to get that Factory Talk activation, and it's only good for a year, and after a year, it quits working. Well, I'm not saying make the machines quit working after a year. I'm saying make the passwords quit working. Why couldn't we come up with a system where, okay, we have an OEM, they built a piece of equipment, and they don't want the customer messing with the equipment for a year, or it's a lease option, or you know, it's a three year payment plan. And they're like, yeah, during that three years, we are the only ones that we want working on that equipment and they have some agreement. So the vendor has to fill out a form and submit it to Rockwell. And then, you know, and maybe Rockwell gets a fee for this, I don't know. But then they have to contact the customer and say, are you aware that, you know, you're going to have this password protected for however long? And okay, if that's infinity and beyond, if you're a customer and you're willing to do that, good luck. Then Rockwell sends something like the factory talk activation to the OEM. And okay, that makes it password protected for a certain length of time. And after that length of time, the password expires. So either the OEM can take the responsibility 
and come up with a renewal plan for the customer, or simply the customer now has an unpassword protected PLC. Anyway, there's some thoughts on password protection and source protection, and no, you probably never will see any videos on that on this channel, because as long as disgruntled Dave can go in and just decide one day, I'm gonna source protect all the PLCs and quit, then no, it's not something we need to discuss, it's not something we need to use, and yeah, it's something that we need to figure out how to make better. So there's my two cents on that. Again, please keep the comments clean and do not cross the line of talking about any cracks or anything. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.